20 minutes to talk to you about dressings. Hopefully the past of it, or the present and future we don't know. Because end of the day we all know that uh, Lister said it once and it's true even today, skin is the best dressing. End of the day whatever you do, the management of the wound is to ensure that at some point skin should come and cover it up. Now we either make the skin come to it straight away or we create a ground for the skin to be graft. And uh, we all know that <coughs> dressings have been evolving ever since uh, the concept of science was, I mean, the human beings got to know about the management of the wounds. Uh, skin is the best dressing and uh, only skin can heal skin and skin will heal if given the chance. Remember, it's not the dressing that's going to heal. So let's not get carried away by the thought that a dressing makes the kind of difference we normally attribute to it. It's got to do with, the, with so many variables that you would, ever, you would never know why certain wounds don't heal and certain heal regardless of what we do with them. So essentially, please understand, especially for the postgraduates, skin is still the best dressing. And whenever you talk about a good dressing, you're titrating it against the qualities of skin. How close is it to skin? Like we talk about differentiation in cancers. So how close is it to the skin in terms of being impervious to whatever is inside and being pervious to certain things which are important? It'll be, it'll be used for. Well, if you're interested, there was, a, there was a book that we did some years ago and it has got some of these chapters. Now this cartoon is a very good way to understand the role of dressings in the, this is, uh, it's not a very complicated picture. So uh, please pay attention just for a moment and you'll get what I'm trying to say. On the right is a, a wound which has got no dressing. On the left, you've got a wound which has got a dressing. Now, if you have a cover or a dressing, the, the cells that are supposed to, the epidermal cells that are supposed to make the wound heal, they will fall in an organized manner and the wound will heal with scarring. And we all know about collagen type 1, type 2, type 3. We all know about tension-free repair of hernias. We all know about fibrosis being a bad thing to happen to a wound, etc., etc. And on the right side you see that there's hardly any organized dropping of these epidermal cells. What does that mean? The wound is exposed to air, there is no moisture retained and the concept of moist wound therapy took birth some years ago but I think it was known for, for centuries and uh, ever since the time of Shushrita, they were using potato peel dressings and, and also the banana peel dressing, not the banana dressing that we know of, these are made of the leaves. Now to retain the moisture, so probably somewhere they knew it, or the use of sphagnum moss by the um, native Indians in, in, in America. Now, so is dressing really necessary? Yes, it is. Most wounds would heal in spite of whatever you do because they, they need to heal from within and we need to heal. It's not the dressing that's going to heal. So when we talk about some technical or advancements and advances in dressings, we normally need to make, an, I mean, you must make a point that we need to make sure that the patient is nutritionally fine and the wound is not flooded. That is, there's no tsunami in the wound and wound has got no desert in it. So there's no desert or no tsunami. So not a dried up wound and not flooded wound. You need to have something in the middle and that's the concept of moist wound therapy which forms the basis of whatever you are doing today. What was the past like? Well, a few quotes which I like to uh, uh, mention here because that makes us feel proud that the concept of wound healing was as old as the Indian civilization or the ancient civilizations of the world. There is little doubt that surgery in Europe which flourished in medieval Italy is a direct descendant of classical Indian surgery and this is what I would reinforce. So actually that's why we call it research. It was already there, we're just finding it out and we're making it better as, as uh, you um, heard in the previous talks. All in all, Shushita must be considered the greatest surgeon of the pre-medieval period. This is what Vipal had to say about Shushita. I had the fortune to deliver an oration on this gentleman and therefore I got these quotes collected from various places. Residency in ancient in India was also Shushita, six years of residency, which, which finally we know as Halstadian residency in US. This, they had six years of training where they were taught to dress on watermelons. They were taught to probe the moth-eaten wood it's documented and these instruments are available if you're interested in Kashi. If you visit BHU, you'll find that they've kept in the Ayurvedic side of it very, very carefully. So it's as old as that. The past is about banana leaves, potato peel, sphagnum moss, animal fat, collagen, cobwebs. 
the Red Indians used cobwebs for dressing wounds, after, especially after the war. And this, now we know, provided the template on which the wound healed. And also the acellular matrices that we talk about today. The keratinocyte that we talk about today. So this was all based on having a scaffold over which the growth would happen. We know that meshes do the same thing today. It's, it's the mesh is just providing you the organized collagen formation and the, and the plate is formed. Of course, honey I've kept in the center. I had the pleasure of publishing this in Indian Journal of Surgery some years ago. Uh, this was done, uh, the work was done at Bombay and Dr. Udwadia was involved in it. This is, honey is coming, has come back, we know about the honey dressings now, as something which takes care of the growth factors, which has antibacterial um, qualities, at the same time doesn't produce resistance. Of course, you need to understand, when we talk about the maggot therapy, it's not the maggot that you get otherwise. I'm sure you have seen the wounds that, are, that have got maggots are re relatively cleaner than the wounds without maggots, especially in malignancy. The maggots eat away the slough. And now we know of the maggot therapy. We know maggot therapy is well established. But now it's got organized uh, into picking up the right kind of larvae to do the job. Well, that's about the past of it. And more can be spoken. Banana leaves are still used. And uh, the publication by Madhuri uh, Gore, who, was, uh, who I took over from as the president of the Indian Society of Wound Management, she has worked extensively on banana leaves. Please do look at it. Where banana leaf is actually providing the kind of cover that you need for moist wound therapy. And we had this collaboration with the, the leather um, factories, uh, leather industries in uh, Chennai, where they were getting this acellular mattress gone out, out of the, the, the animal uh, uh, skins, and they were making the dressings out of that. So you need to look for Indian solutions to Indian problems. Sometimes the, exp the, the expense or the cost involved in a dressing can be, I mean, it can prohibit you from using it. So find solutions. So now, we, so the movement was from mere coverage towards coverage and healing. So earlier it was just to cover the wound so that you don't have the uh, contamination subsequently. But later on people understood if you point, provide a moist wound environment, the, the healing also happens. That's the history of modern dressings and 2002 onwards so much has happened. I mean every other day you have a new dressing coming and people are just um, sometimes reinventing the wheel, but mostly they are progressing in only one direction. All of us know there are few factors that stimulate wound healing. There are few factors that help in antibacterial control of the wound. Uh, uh, third, the factors that take care of the discharge that is happening. So there are various factors. And when we put them all together, maybe the ideal wound, uh, wound dressing would happen someday, which you can apply in most wounds. But we know that as of now, we need to tailor it to the wound. Up till 80s, Traditional gauze-based products, zinc-based bandages, etc. This was the era of dry on wound dressing, uh, wet dressing. What was that? We all know, remember our childhood. And you heard there's a wet dressing put. And we were hoping that it will dry up in a couple of days. And it will take away the slough with it when you peel it off. Uh, and you remember peeling it off. It took an hour to do that. To that because you'll take one corner, then the other, because it will hurt. And you wanted it to be moist. And we know that you need to make it moist before you remove, remove it. But the concept of de-sloughing using dressing which has got dried up was given up because it took away with it the granulation tissue also. So the healing tissue also came off with it and besides it was painful. So this was till this time the era was wet on dry, dry on wet kind of a dressing. Few pastes were added to prevent it from sticking. And we remember those white looking ones and the red looking ones in, in our childhood. The two uh, main modern dressings that is in 1980s that moisture keeping, absorbing polyurethane. I mean, this is when paraffin gauze started coming, or you dipped it in Vaseline and applied it. This is when it developed. Look, I'm touching the philosophy of dressings, so you won't get a, uh, the laundry list of all the dressings that are available because you just name it and there is a dressing for it. Then came the concept of vapor permeable adhesive creams, hydrogels, hydrocolytes. These are animal products at one point of time. Then alginates, which came out of algae. And they found that alginates make fantastic um, moisture keeping, pain free, growth factor stimulating dressings. But they were expensive because this had to be got from these algae from the sea. And synthetic foam dressings gradually started coming. You'll have a foam put there which will kindly absorb and adsorb things. The new group of products came in which are anti-adhesives, silicone meshes, tissue adhesives, 
barrier films, silk collagen containing dressings introduced. And finally, we are looking at making skin in the laboratory now. So this keratinocyte culture came into use. The problem with keratinocyte development was that when you develop these keratinocytes in the, in the Petri dish and you apply it on a human body, it didn't really translate into the advantage you're looking at. The reason being, it is not a wild, so it cannot fight the, the infection that happens in a real world. So as of now, you're still working on it. And you know of the synthetic or artificial skin that is available. They're merely the scaffolds where you can actually um, um, buy it over the counter. And now they're loading it with the, the growth factors. And this is already approved. Some of them are approved by FDA, I'll share with you. So this is where it started moving. And then came the role of growth factors in selected wounds like diabetic foot or also <coughs> excuse me, chronic non-healing ulcers where they found that you can put in certain substances that can take care of the metalloproteases. So what should be an ideal dress wound dressing like? It should maintain moist environment at wound's interface. If I have to answer it in one line, it should be like skin. Removes exudates, so there's no strike through. For the benefit of postgraduates, you're often asked uh, in an exam, what is a strike through dressing? When you must have seen, if you applied a dressing and you can see something on the surface, so that the contents have traversed through, this, through the, 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 the dressing and they're appearing on the surface. What does that do? That provides a track for the bacteria to go. There should be no strike through in any dressing, whatever dressing you apply. Therefore, vacuum dressings do very well because they don't let the strike through happen. Padding came and therefore came the role of primary dressing, secondary dressing and tertiary dressing. You'll cover each with the, the other one. At the same time, you want to make sure that there is oxygen that can go while the fluid should come out. It provides thermal insulation, relieves pain, a barrier to microorganisms, allows gaseous and fluid exchange, as I mentioned, non-adherent and easily removed without trauma, like your silver dressings. You have many dressings that are available today that peel off without causing any pain. And I'll share with you some that we've tried using in our own setup. Non-adherent and easily removed, leaves no foreign particles in the wound, is non-toxic, non-allergenic, and non sensitizing and finally, highly absorbable for, for the, I mean, for the exuding wounds. It absorbs wound odor, especially in the malignant wounds. It should be able to absorb also charcoal dressings. Sterile and easy, easy to use, can be applied by medical personnel or the patient. Requires infrequent changing. You, can, you, you must be understanding that we are asking for moon here, but that's what you should be asking for. And finally, you get something in the middle. Is available in a suitable range of forms and sizes. Cost effective. That's the bottom line. But that's the kind of dressing that doesn't exist today. So we don't have an ideal dressing, like we don't have an ideal suture. What you do is you titrate against this, these qualities. If it matches close to it, even if 80% of this you can achieve, you've got a dressing you wanted. Now, since I'm, pro, I'm expected to cover the basics about it, there are basically two types of dressings, if you have to look at them. Otherwise, there are 200 types but broadly two types. Dry dressings, which are gauze, bandages, foils, foams, tissue adhesives, non-adhesive meshes. Moisture keeping dressings, pastes, creams, ointments, non-permeable, semi-permeable membranes or foils, hydrocolloids, hydrogen, hydrogels, combination products, etc. Now, I know the time is limited and maybe I'll take five minutes for whatever uh, didn't happen in initially so that we can cover up some aspects which are necessary for the postgraduates. Fluid accumulation leads to maceration and that leads to fluid bacterial overgrowth. Should be avoided. This will include cotton wool or sponge. We are all familiar with that. It is designed to match the executive properties of the wound, so should be tailored. Non-adherent dressings. These are impregnated with paraffin or Vaseline or petroleum uh, jelly. I uh, mean, you can have these products. Secondary dressing must be placed on top to seal the edges and it should be larger than the initial dressing so that you can seal it. Sometimes the sealant that you use can produce the erosion and cause, uh, uh, cause a wound itself. Occlusive and semi-occlusive dressings, they provide a good environment for clean, minimally exudative wounds. Are waterproof and impervious to microbes, but permeable, uh, permeable to vapor and oxygen. So it's one-way flow that you're looking at. 
Classically, you will hear a lot about them in the next few days. I will not discuss in details each one, but what exactly is a hydrogel dressing? It's occlusive and absorbent. So, forms a complex, so it, form, it forms a complex structure, water and fluid absorption, particle then swells up and it forms a atraumatic removal. This leads to atraumatic removal. It's a cross-linked polymer with high water content, closest to ideal dressing. That's why I put it first. It cools the surface, which reduces the pain, and moist wood environment is maintained. So bottom line is still the moist wound environment that you're looking at. A word about interactive dressings. If you just type this word in Google, you'll find hundreds of dressings. Primarily, interactive dressings were dressings which were aimed at, you put a product there, wound throws something, the two join, and then they help, help in healing. So methyl cellulose, pectin, gelatin, poly, isobutylene, and alginate. Surface contact leads to, it will absorb fluids, and this will change the physical state of dressing. It will become a gel and it will cover. So it becomes a moist wound therapy again, uh, and can last longer. It ensures moist environment and promotes form, form, formation of the granulation tissue. Pain relief is natural because it is gel and there is no way it is going to stick. Just read the right one in red. Alginates, what do they do? I've already mentioned about this dressing. They promote production of TNF alpha, tumor necrosis factor alpha, and they are highly absorbable, biodegradable. They are not animal products. So they can turn into sodium alginates in presence of wound exudates, form a gel, swell, provide the moist wound. They are not indicated, but in a moist wound already that is infected. Like I said, if there is a tsunami in the wound, put a dry dressing. If there is a wound desert, put a, dry, a, a wet moist dressing. If it's some, somewhere in the middle it reaches, healing would start. Too much of fluid is also not good. Then there are a few acellular matrices and combination products, which you'll hear about again. Very commonly available in your theater, regularly provided to you for various functions. Various models of skin substitutes, of course you have ORC, that is oxidated, uh, oxidized regenerated cellulose, which also comes in the form of uh, gel forms and other, other, other materials which I am not getting into. Collagen, available as promogran, this was old, single layer, binds to metalloproteases in chronic wound and neutralizes them, it allows healing. Now, they are usually the, these products are usually elevated in chronic discharging wounds and they inactivate growth factors which are necessary for healing. ORC and collagen matrix useful in diabetic food especially. In addition to the vacuum, vacuum came in much later. These were already the dressings and I am talking about dressings which are conventional. So, uh, please don't confuse it with or they are not competitive. They are all together and you can use a lot of them together. And maybe it will bore you to death when you keep talking about wounds for three days, end of it, you're wounded. The reason being, so much talk which is repeated, each time you'll hear the same thing maybe. But just pay attention to the basic facts. If you keep the moist, the wound moist, if you keep it covered, it has to heal on its own. So it doesn't have to be a very fancy, expensive dressing each time. Finally, some absorbable materials, they are commonly used as hemostats also. And you know, a lot of companies will visit you and say, this is a hemostat come wound healer. Use it for both purposes, because initially, as Tarun was mentioning, there is initially some hemorrhage. Now that itself serves as a culture for bacteria to grow. To grow. So this prevents that kind of a leakage or the seepage. Uh, collagen, gelatin, oxidized cellulose and oxidized regenerated cellulose. A word about medicated dressings, I'll spend half a minute here. They usually used for drug delivery, went out of use for a long time and the reason was simple. If you put, you must have heard of people throwing antibiotics into the wound, gentamicin after hernia surgery, gallbladder surgery, whatever. And we realize it doesn't work. It's very much similar to insulin dressings in diabetic foot. We realize that it doesn't work that way. It's not as simple as we imagine usually that there is a reduced insulin there, reduced bacteria, uh, antibiotics there. Well, let's provide it locally. It led to a huge amount of bacterial resistance, uh, antibiotics resistance in the bacteria, so they were not used. Then came the concept of not using actually the classical antibiotics, but products like tri uh, triclosan, which you have in your toothpaste, which works by osmosis. Uh, they've used it in Vicryl Plus Suture. So many places that they are not using direct antibiotics. And finally, we are back. If you use certain products which are age old, 
amongst the most commonly used um, non-synthetic product, it was honey, which does as good as silver. Silver is the other one. Silver naturally is expensive. Gold is even better. I'm sure diamond must be even better. They're all expensive. So um, what you can use, when you can use, where you can use is important. So don't just get carried away by this dressing is better than the other one. None is better than the other. It has to be tailored to that wound. The wound has to heal. And more than that, the patient has to heal. If the patient heals, the wound heals automatically. The silver has antimicrobial effects due to interference with bacterial, electron, ion transport, which bind to the bacterial DNA. So silver is known. And silver is used in the past also for dressing. Silver dressing is used in uh, the uh, Yunani medicine, which was very popular in the Mughal times, when the Greek medicine was kind of a mixture of Ayurvedic and Greek medicine. And they, they use it very effectively. Uh, cell replication can be divided. Now, I think uh, the choreoamniotic dressing that uh, Abhishek was showing, I mean, I was impressed to see the outcome in that case. But long back, we were using amniotic. I worked on it, and I published that paper long back. Amniotic membranes were used straight. I mean, you have it in plenty. This dressing is available maximum in, in India and China. You know that. Because we have the, 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 the maximum number of delivery rates. So the amniotic membrane was free of cost. We just needed to make sure that you take care of the, you, you can easily freeze dry it, you can auto, you can autoclave it, you can do whatever, but the trouble was one, it is a very, very useful dressing, mind you. Translucent, you can see through it, which is an important advantage. Very low immunogenicity, decreases pain because it's moist. Bacterial control, tremendous because it's meant for the fetus to control that, stimulates healing. Needs to be changed daily, that's a problem. So you need to have in plenty, which is available. Needs to be covered with gauze to prevent dehydration and desiccation. Moisture is to be retained. Refrigeration needed to keep for six weeks. You can't just take it out every day. And the major trouble where it stopped was HIV. Because you need to really test for it. You need to be extremely careful. And therefore, it did not stay that long. And finally, they are back with this amniotic, choreoamniotic chorion, membranes. I don't think I'll touch much of VAC. But the concept of topical negative pressure therapy is old. The logic was if you keep the oxygen level low, the surface of the wound, which looks paradoxical, it stimulates angiogenesis because of hypoxia factor, with, which we know already, HPO or whatever. Now, angiogenesis is healthy and the unhealthy one. You have the unhealthy one in malignancy. I think I'll stop in a minute. No, no, please carry on. We have enough time. Please carry on. Okay. So, I'm sorry. So, um, if the negative pressure therapy can be applied, it will produce a hypoxic environment. At the same time, it will bring the edges together. But the first one was not better. Most people thought suction would bring the edges together. It rarely does. With the wound, how, how far the wound is, that's a factor. You can't just get the edges to slide in like that. It's not easy. But what it does is it creates that stimulating factor which leads to angiogenesis and healing. So VAC is very effective and I think it can be used almost everywhere. Rarely, I mean, but before you apply VAC or you talk about it or think about it, I've already told you what does it do? It creates a hypoxic environment. So naturally you should make sure there is no anaerobic growth there. Because if there is anaerobic growth there, you're just giving them candy. So the anaerobes will grow. Make sure the culture is negative, and which means tissue culture, not the swab, because anaerobes are deeper. Very effective. You saw the use of it. It can be used in the head and neck was, uh, was very special. We did some work on it some years ago, because we couldn't afford it at that time. So these are Indian solutions to Indian problems. 2003, I published it. Actually, it went as a letter. I wrote a letter to editor that we are using this. Does it work out? And uh, for this, I... Oh, I mean, uh, a lot of my residents supported this idea that we can create this. Uh, this is a uh, OT sheet, which we very made multiple holes. We've got better now. And the suction uh, cannula was put, and it was connected to the Romovac suction initially. Then we calculated the suction amount. Much, much better machines are available today. It's just to let you know, still keep thinking for what you can do in your setup. It's not mandatory. We have got a machine in our hospital, so we are able to use it. But if we don't have it, we'll still use it. So therefore, one project I'll keep, I'll all, I always keep it going. They're doing wound therapy, making the vac themselves. And they do a fantastic job of it. 
Now, uh, whether it's stack or WAC, both can be done, and it worked quite well. A word finally about the barrier films. Now, you heard about many pastes that serve as barriers to take care of the maceration that happens around a stoma, around a wound, around a laparostomy, around a very heavily discharging wound. Now, they are various protective polymers, and when we started looking for it, it was essentially in a scenario where we found that wounds had to be mostly open in our wards. We get referred cases, and a lot of them are very, very ill. The wounds can be, have to be left open or they get opened up. So either way, we have an open wound. So we have no choice but to manage them open. So we have to protect the skin from moisture loss. Some of these slides, some people have already seen in the past, but I thought it will be pertinent to share it. Protect, what, does, what actually happens is these uh, fluids, they keep going down the skin. They eat away the surface and create a raw surface there, which really hurts. And you must have seen the patient crying with pain when the contents drop down. Now, we, we, we could cover it up with anything which is impervious to water. And that came in the form of various creams. We've used white of an egg. People have used many, many, many things. Now, we have used the Fevi Quick, which is super glue. So we published and we have patented it also. This was uh, with the reverse of a blade, you can apply it. Uh, well, uh, it, is, it was already FDA approved. And it, has been, it was already used in vascular work. So we were safe on that account. What you can see is around the wound, all the raw area is covered with fevi quick. What does it do? It's a super glue. So it stays there, provide, thickens up, and the fluid goes over it. It provides an impervious layer for a week. And after a week, it already comes off on its own. So you don't have to really peel it off because stratum corneum grows. So each you can apply it next week. The only precaution you need to take is that the vapor is getting into the eyes, which would mean you can put on glasses. Most doctors would be wearing anyway. So you apply it all around, and we don't need to apply anything else. And the results can be extremely gratifying. That's super glue, and uh, with the reverse of a blade. First 50 cases we publish, and then we this is in use in our wards. Anytime anybody is interested, and finally you can have one little wound, and which you can cover with a bag, and the wound can be managed. Now, no fancy dressing, it works out fine. You can make a dressing on it. These are, these are, many people can take a leaf out of it. So how do you choose a dressing? Coming to the end of it, uh, friends, the approach is the same. Kiss, keep it simple and safe. Or keep it simple and stupid. Don't try to put fancy dressings. Sometimes you spend thousands of rupees for a wound, which would heal otherwise. Non-draining wounds. This is just a hint for the, it's kind of a, you can, you can have a guideline for yourself. Non-draining wounds, semi-occlusive dressings. Don't occlude it completely. Drainage is less than 1 to 2 ml per day, which is too little. Semi-occlusive or non-absorbent dressing. Drainage is 3 to 5 ml, moderately draining wound. Non-adherent primary layer or absorbent secondary layer and occlusive dressing to protect the normal tissue. Heavily draining wounds, more than 5 ml per day, in addition to dressing, for moderately discharging wound, you must make sure that you you have to make sure that the secondary dressing is bigger than the primary and tertiary is bigger than the secondary. The future now, I'll just quickly wrap, wrap up. Present and the future, they just intermingle. Future is nothing but, see tomorrow will also come as today, tomorrow. It's only today. You can't go back and live in past, but you can take inspiration from it. So tomorrow will be today, tomorrow. So that is the same thing. That's why I put it as present and the future. They go together. Conventional skin grafts. You know that skin is still the best dressing, whatever you do. If you can get skin across the counter, no dressing is needed. Keep the wound dry and clean. Moist dress. graft takes up. Split thickness skin graft takes up in most cases, except when there's streptococcal infection, which produces fibrolysin, which doesn't allow it to stick. Staph aureus, pseudomonas, and all contraindication. You can, if you can use a flap, it's even better. Autologous allogenic grafts, including cadaveric, are used today. We'll discuss. Then bioengineered skin substitutes, topically applied growth factors, systemic agents, and gene therapy. The skin substitutes I'll share with you. In Subdhajan, we, the, we were a, the largest plastic surgery center. So they did a keratinocyte culture. They pr prepare skin. Where what you can do is, uh, you can have a postage stamp of that skin applied with a massive loss of, especially in burns, that's why I'm referring to the burn center. 
they'll post postage stamp graphs which will grow outwards and kind of cover it up. They have artificial skin available. Non, non effective without debrima. Needless to say, the wound needs to be prepared for skin to be put. And till that time, you need dressing. So dressing has got a role only till the such time that either the skin covers it or you cover it with skin. Just the two things. So dressing has a role till then. After that, skin is the dressing. In fact, most flaps that we do or my, even uh, the graft that we put second day, third day, we take off the dressing. We don't put a dressing on it. It's not needed. It heals. All the new, all that is new is not necessarily the best. Please be careful about it. And don't just uh, take it as gospel. It will work. Principles are the same. Things have got better. We have understood them better. Engineered skin dressings and substitutes. Do they really work? Wound coverage with epidermal substitutes, autologous or allogenic cultures. Acellular dermis products, they are useful. Because they can be even xenogenic, especially the pore sign skin. It can be treated and the skin that I mentioned about the leather laboratory in uh, Chennai. They will get the cells off, provide you with a scaffold and the cells will come. That is working. So you should not believe that skin is available across the counter. It's available in a manner that you should understand. The wound has still got to heal. Non-collagen based products enhancing dermal regeneration, derma graft, which is made out of, this is also CEA, which we all know, is out of the newborn foreskin because it doesn't react so quickly. And you can use a postage stamp of this. Where the circumcision has happened, skin can be preserved. The derma graft contains cryopreserved human fibroblasts Derived from the dermal substitute composed of fibroblast, extracellular matrix and bioabsorbable scaffold, which is what I mentioned. The future still and the significance of skin substitutes, I think we are arriving there. Covering extensive wounds with limited availability of autographs when you don't have the skin available, like in extensive burns. Manufactured by tissue engineering, they have combined novel techniques with living cells to provide functional skin substitutes. They, provide a, they actually provide a bridge between dressings and skin graft. And as I mentioned, the other end is the skin graft, this side is the dressing. Theoretical advantage of being readily available, they provide cover and healing. This is CEA, which I mentioned, cultured epithelial autograft, taken out of the foreskin of a neonate. Uh, this actually is an expanded autologous homologous keratinocyte um, um, bunch. They are expanded from a postage stamp biopsy of patient's own skin. Very easily done. Take the biopsy, then you build it on. So you can culture the skin of the patient like we do water transfusion. These are cultured with fibroblasts and growth factors and grown into sheets covering large area and give the appearance of normal skin. It's available. CA is available from cadaver and also unrelated donors or neonatal foreskin. Dama graft I've already expanded. The cryopreserved CEAs are available off the shelf now. So it's this far you go. A word about the growth factor therapy. You heard about it in diabetic foot, non-healing wounds, peripheral vascular disease, ischemic ulcers, but the risk is jump start healing. People will straight away start with it. The wound is supposed to be allowed, to, it, we are supposed to allow it to heal. We need to improve the blood supply, not that it will it'll not work as a magic bullet. So used in non-healing wounds, inadequate insufficient growth factors. Caution is what I've mentioned. Success in animal models did not translate into clinical setting, but the platelet derived growth factor, this one is available, is approved by FDA. Diabetic foot is where they use. A word about poor sign skin. Xeno, I mean this port, the, the I remember when I was small, I uh, had my uncle who used to be doing these, he was a surgeon, so the dressings would happen. And in one patient where they had used in their hospital, the skin of the pig. For some reason, pigs have a lot of things similar with us. So whenever you look at, even in the training models, you find pig. So this is sterilized by ionizing radiation, freeze dried, natural matrix, and then you can use it for covering it up using the grafting. Well, we have moved on, and the take home is, no single dressing is appropriate for all wound types and all stages of healing. So don't, don't just take it as, a gospel that will work. Tailor the dressing and there will be special scenarios which I will just touch. Synthetic skin or stem cell related research is already on. You may actually create skin in the laboratory in the petri dish and take it to use. Uh, this I am going to cover tomorrow. So, but just I will just touch this. The problem with the dressing in malignant wounds is they have bad discharges 
A lot of them come with fungating masses. Melodorous, they tend to be painful. There is a concept, there is a problem with the regular bleeding, which causes more infection repeatedly. Quality of life is suffering. They smell, they stink. So most people go away from them. I had a patient of soft tissue sarcoma that I had operated four times in the head and neck area over a period of 14 years. Finally, when it got into fungating scenario, he said, sir, I can't eat because I can't smell it. So it can get that bad. And what do you do for these dressings? Although skin is the best dressing still, you can use certain dressing materials like metrogel or maybe uh, adsorbing uh, adsorbents like charcoal in a bag which can absorb all the bad odor. This quality of life can be seriously an issue. The state of mind, because you normally abandon these patients as those who are dying, but their wound needs to be taken care of regardless. Now this is a, you can see a wound on the nose, which I truly appreciate what Abhishek mentioned. All non-healing wounds must be biopsied. It came out to be basal cell carcinoma. Now this has been reconstructed using a nasally will flap. For this the dressing won't work. This kind of a wound, this is a malignant wound, fungating, but fortunately just the mouth opening is adequate. It's anterior, needs a commando, we had to get the mandible out and um, right-sided radical neck dissection, left-sided modified radical neck dissection, forehead flap based on superficial temporal artery, things that can be done by most surgeons. Again, a fungating malignant wound which had to be, this has been already resected, need to reconstruct, and this is radial artery forearm flap, most of us need to be quit. This is the last case and I must share with you, this was a gardener in Subdajang Hospital only, soft tissue sarcoma, you can see the scars here. He never came back for radiation because he thought, most people taught him that radiation can be uh, the cause of death. So he did not receive radiation, came back with a fungating wound after retirement. And you can look at it, there are maggots in it. And maggots take care of the slough, but after some time the maggots grow right into the neck. And they can erode into vessels and produce pain. Had to be resected, to be reconstructed. You can see the internal jugular vein there. The chest wall had to be reconstructed, reverse DP. Graft here, you can see the graft here. You can see the lateral, in lateral intercostal artery based flap here. And that's a deltopectoral flap. This is the dressing. Fungating wound dressing. Fungating wound, this was of course uh, a radical case. Fungating wound had to be resected. And this is the extensive, can you be aggressive with these? Well, this was of course a fungating uh, malignancy, primary squamous cell carcinoma of the thyroid, but this wound was not healing. Managed as fungating wound only, had to be resected finally and you had to reconstruct using deltopectoral flap. Uh, a case of carcinoma penis treated by radical penectomy 15 years ago in our own hospital received radiation. Post radiation came with a wound in the inguinal region which is discharging now the intestinal contents. So the spontaneous enterocutaneous fistula which you cannot manage by just dressing. You'll have to go for it. Last case where a phonius gangrene was being managed as phonius for a long time but it was not healing. Biopsy taken came out to be squamous cell carcinoma had to be resected and reconstructed. Conditions like these will go on happening. Well, uh, the dressing recommendations by the the American College of Surgeons, where we, we had the honor and pleasure of being part of it. Bleeding wounds, alginate sheet, dressings of sorban. I'm giving the last uh, take home for you. Lightly exudating wounds, hydrocolloid sheets, semi-permeable films, lyophilm, films, sorbosan. Heavily exudative wounds, hydrofibers, sorbosan uh, is actually available with the Johnson Johnson, uh, they had made a dressing on that. Caltostat or sorban plus with an adsorbent pad. Cavity wounds, you can pack it with alginate rope or you can use even the surgery cells or the, or the gel foams. Uh, the, um, you heard of bee wax which is available as the bone wax. That was also used for dressing, that can be used for packing. Malodorous wounds, classically activated charcoal and uh, we use metron resolve for dressing. Metron resolve put into the bowl, dress, pack. The odor disappears, anaerobes disappear, the wound starts healing, we are using it. Infected wounds, you can use topical metronidazole. <coughs> Last slide, friends. A footprint from uh, Kenya dated 1.5 million years ago. That's how we stood at that point of time. We have started walking, we started running. Our feet are changing still. We'll keep changing. Always is always wrong uh, in science and in life also, and never is never right. So it'll keep evolving, and I'm sure in the next couple of days, two days that we are here, we'll hear more about dressings. So that's not the last word on dressing. The future is bright as we are looking at wounds as an entity. Today in US and UK, we have wound nurses, we have wound experts, wound clinics where you can go for wound management and uh, please believe it, it does make a difference. 
it's not that just just another wound which you dress and patient will be fine our patients also are learning about it wound management is a very specialized approach and there can be a, a, a specialization in wounds i'm not saying that we should have another mch in wounds because mch is killing the basic training of surgeons a surgeon should be equipped with all that is needed for the management of wounds and there should be specialized wound clinics and i'm sure that's the future for all of us thank you very much for patient listening thank you sir thank you dr chinta